I'm so excited because I'm on my very first real solo RV camping trip. I'm over 300 miles from home and it's just my dog Princess and me. Not only that, but look, I'm camping in my favorite place, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and my camping spot is on the south shoreline of Lake Superior. The waves today are larger than I've ever seen them. Oh, the sunset is so gorgeous, but those winds have really been picking up all day. It's nine o'clock and the winds are getting more fierce. I can't believe how windy it is. Let's go inside, Princey. Come on, let's go before we get blown away. Oh, I had big rocks holding that mat in place and it looks like it's gonna blow away. Come on, Princey, let's get inside. The best thing I think I can do is just stay inside and hopefully this will pass real soon. <laughs> but, oh wow, look at that sunset. Okay, Princey, sit down. Princey, dance. Yes, dance. Yay, Princey. Okay, one last outside check before I go to bed. Oh yeah, it's still howling out there. night of RV camping for me. The winds woke me up because I could feel the camper moving and swaying around and this wasn't a safe feeling and I didn't know what to do. I'd opened my weather app and it had told me that there could be wind gusts up to 50 miles an hour but knowing this I didn't have enough information to know if I was actually in danger of my small camper flipping. So the next day I did some research to find an answer and I want to share this with you in case you find yourself in a dangerously windy situation so you know what to expect and what to do because trust me not knowing is scary when it happens. But first, if you're new here, I'm Randy. And every Thursday, I help you make big memories in small campers. And say it with me, because weekends are just too short. There are two things for certain. First, weather can be unpredictable. And secondly, being in an RV with high winds can be dangerous. So first, I'm gonna share a wind study with you that will answer the question that I desperately wanted to know that night. Can winds actually tip over an RV? And if so, what are the wind speeds that could tip over an RV? And secondly, I learned about things that we need to do to keep ourselves safe if we do find ourselves in our RV and in a windstorm. And these were things that I wasn't aware of, so I hope that you find them helpful too. And if you think that I miss a tip, please share it with me and this awesome Weekend Warrior community by leaving it in the comments section below. So we can all learn how to stay safe together. Third, I found a wind app that'll show you current and forecasted wind conditions, plus notify you when there are wind alerts that you need to know about. And this app is pretty cool. You'll see what I mean in a minute. And last, but not least, I discovered what I think is the number one thing that every RVer must have in their RV to keep yourself safe during bad weather. So please, 
stay tuned for this. We've got a lot of information to cover, but it's all important. Okay, let's answer the question. How much wind can a camper trailer withstand? And this is what I discovered. Can high winds actually flip over an RV? And the answer is yes. Okay, so what wind speeds can flip over an RV? And the answer is, it depends. Some of the main factors are the length of your RV, the weight of your RV, the weight distribution of your RV, the shape of your RV, and other factors. And it's important to know that RVs are more apt to flip over when they're moving versus when they're parked. In general, when driving down the road, wind speeds of 30 to 50 miles an hour could flip an RV. In addition to the factors that I just mentioned, other factors such as the type of vehicle that you're towing your RV with, if the road is wet or not, what type of pavement you're on, and of course your driving skills will determine how much wind your RV can withstand when you're driving down the road. Personally, I felt the impact of winds at just 20 to 30 miles an hour when we've been driving our small camper down the road. When it's really windy out and you're driving down the road in your RV, always listen to a weather channel or get a current weather report or get an app that will tell you the current and forecasted wind speeds that you're going to encounter along your route. And just because a weather report indicates that the winds are fine to drive in, trust your instinct. If you're feeling uncomfortable, pull over. Always put your safety first. Okay, what about a parked RV? I discovered a wind study that references the minimum wind speed for overturning stationary RVs. They reported minimum overturning wind speeds of 53 miles per hour for an 18 foot travel trailer, 65 miles per hour for a 29 and a half foot motor home, 73 miles per hour for a semi trailer, and 101 miles per hour for a 16 and a half foot camper van. As I mentioned, there are more factors than just the length of your RV and wind speed that will determine if your RV can be overturned by the wind. But these numbers are a good point of reference. The good news I learned is that RVs are rarely overturned by the wind. Next are the important measurements we should all take in high wind situations to prevent our RV from flipping over and keep us safe. Once again, if I miss something that you think I should know about, let me know in the comments section below. Number one, know where you need to go if you have to leave your RV. Look for sturdy and safe buildings, such as a bathhouse. Number two, park your RV so the front of your RV is pointed right into the wind. Number three, deploy your stabilizers. They provide additional points of contact between your RV and the ground. Number four, hook your tow vehicle to your trailer. Extra contact with a heavy object will help prevent your RV from flipping over as well as just make you feel more stable while you're inside your RV. Number five, close all vents and windows. Number six, make sure that everything in your RV is secured. Number seven, put your awning in. Number eight, make sure that all outdoor things are put away. Flying objects can cause a lot of damage to your RV. Number nine, if you've got the time, fill your tanks with water. This will give your RV extra weight and help prevent it from flipping over. Number 10, and this is an important one, move your RV from under overhanging trees. Ultimately, your RV is at greater risk of wind damage from falling tree limbs than the wind itself. I'll leave a link to a page on my website so you can print this information and keep it handy for when you need it. I'll also leave a link to the study that I previously mentioned and the wind app that I'm going to share with you right now. And the wind app that I really like is called windy.com. You can access this on your desktop computer or they've got an app that you can use for your phone for both iOS and Android devices. This app has a lot of functionality, but what I like about it is how visually stunning it is to use. Let me show you. When you open the app, this is what you see. You instantly know the wind speeds around you and the direction of the wind. When you press the play button, it'll show forecasted details so you know what to expect. If I had had this app the night I was concerned my RV might flip over, I'd have known if the winds were going to get worse so I knew if I needed to find shelter elsewhere or if the worst was over so I could stop panicking. This app is really easy to use. 
And in addition to being a great wind monitoring app, it's also packed full of fantastic other weather features. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna go through them all, but I did find a really good YouTube video that does a good job of explaining all these features. So if you wanna learn more about this app, I'll leave a link to that YouTube video in the video description below. Okay, here's another scenario that I want you to consider. What if you suddenly find yourself in bad weather and your electric power goes out and your phone battery is low or dead? Or you're boondocking and have poor or no cell service at all and you need to know what weather is coming your way? There are going to be situations when we cannot rely on our phones to access real-time weather data. That's why I also just purchased a NOAA weather radio. If you're unfamiliar what it does, like I was, a NOAA weather radio is a nationwide network of radio stations broadcasting continuous weather directly from your nearest National Weather Service office. It broadcasts official weather warnings, watches, forecasts, and other hazard information 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It will actually sound an alert that will notify you of any bad weather that's coming your way. The thing that makes a NOAA weather radio so valuable to us is that no cell service is required. It'll run off battery, so no electric power is required. But this one also provides an emergency hand crank that you can use in case your batteries go dead. This is gonna make me feel much better knowing that I've got access to real-time weather data at all times. I believe that a NOAA weather radio is a must-have for all our beers. If you want to know more about this one, the one that I purchased on Amazon, I'll leave more information about it in the video description below. And please, please, please keep yourself and your loved ones safe while you're out enjoying nature. I hope you found this information valuable, and if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button located right below this video. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you.